This video is going to review the Theodolite function, which is one of the applications. If you don't have it saved as a hot button on your screen, if you simply go into your uh, drawing screen, go to the applications menu, it's going to be sitting right here as well. Uh, you do not need to be stationed. It does not matter what project you're on in this. Uh, whatever information, uh, you, whatever you do in this application um, will not carry over per se into the job that you're working on. All the angles are only specific to whatever you're doing within that application. So that's kind of nice. You just kind of, if you need to use the Adalite, just get started right away, use the program, and then switch right back to whatever, whatever you were doing before. Um, in Theodolite, you'll see this menu over here on the right side. Let me go ahead and expand it. The idea behind a Theodolite is that you have your total station that is acting like a pivot point, right? So the, with the POS-180, this is a very popular application because the POS-180, you can actually turn on a plumb laser and it shines down, down directly over the point that it's standing over. The PLT-300, I, I want to be really clear about this. The PLT-300, you can certainly do all the button pushes that you see on here, but the difference between the POS-180 and the PLT-300 is that the PLT-300 doesn't shine down a laser of the exact point that it's over. It's a different type of a head unit. And so while you can still turn angles uh, around the pivot point of the tool, you can't use it as accurately as you could if you were using this function with the POS-180. So feel free to use it with both tools. But I think there's a, a reality here we need to acknowledge that you really would use the Theodolite, especially if you had a plumb laser shining down from the center of your tool, which the PLT-300 doesn't have. The POS-180 does. So to get started, um, the functionality of this program is by um, opening up the Theodolite function, and you'll see you have these values over here. Now, these aren't going to change um, until you actually do, do something. So the way I, I always like to begin with Theodolite is by point my, my head unit at whatever direction I want. So let's think, let's think in realistic terms. Let's say that you're pivoted over intersection of a grid line, of two different grid lines on your job site, and you have the laser pointed directly on the ground at, uh, down in the distance at, uh, at where the, one of the grid lines is snapped at. So you have the, your laser pointer on the chalk line of the grid, and your total station is directly over the intersection of that grid line and, and another. You now have the tool oriented at a certain location. You can then go ahead and press this measure button right here by pressing measure. And uh, here's the diagram I'm going to use for the next part of the section here where I'm going to talk about the values on the screen. You can see the tripod on the tripod legs, and that little arrow indicates the head unit making a measurement on the ground of the laser. Once the tool makes a measurement, it's going to tell you a few pieces of information. The first, uh, I'm going to talk about these two bottom pieces. It's going to tell you the horizontal distance, meaning the distance you are away from the the tool is away from that measured point. So for me, I'm very close to it. I'm about five foot nine feet, five foot nine inches away from the point that I measured, and it's going to tell you the slope you are on the tool. So if you're looking, um, it takes the tool, the head unit location, uh, the center of the horizontal angle, pointing down or up wherever you are. It's going to give you the slope it is from the uh, center point of the tool on the horizontal angle to the location that you're pointed to. So you get those two pieces of information. The second pieces of information are the vertical angle, which no matter which way you turn the tool, the vertical angle is never going to be able to be adjusted manually. What I mean by that is I can't type in numbers here. Uh, the vertical angle is specific to the tool itself. As you spin it around and around and around in a circle, it will tell you whether or not it's, uh, it'll tell you the vertical angle it's looking at. So right now I'm at eight degrees, which means that I'm pretty close to my horizontal zero, which is when it's pointing straight out. Sometimes in your settings, your angle settings, I'll show you this real quick. If you go to your general settings, right here, you can choose to have your zero of your vertical angle pointed forward at the horizon, directly horizontal, or zenith, meaning your zero of your horizontal angle would be when it's pointing directly up. That's how you can change the, the vertical angle beginning. For me, I have it on horizontal because that's what I prefer. So that, so as you can see, my, my, my head unit is basically pointing straight out, um, but it's a little tilted up. Now the horizontal angle, this is what you can change, and that's what we're gonna go into a little bit more. But right now, however my unit was set up first, it's just telling me that the direction it's pointed now from its original stationing is at the 51 degree, 37 minute, 39 second mark. That's where it's located on the horizontal angle from wherever it was originally set up as far as how it's spun. Now this is what we can play around with and change. And that's when we go into this button down here. So let's say that right now where I'm looking 
directly at the grid. Let's say I'm looking at grid line A, and my head unit is pivoted over the intersection of A, grid line A, and grid line 1, and my laser is pointed down at the chalk line of that grid line A. Let's say that I want to, I know that I want to pivot from that, uh, from that spot oriented to that grid line, but I want to make it easy on myself, and I want to call that angle I'm looking at zero. Meaning, when I start from this horizontal location that the tool's at, I can be pulling from here and I can be making my angle dimensions from a zero mark rather than a random mark that's hard to understand. I want to say check and you can see here it's just confirming that I want to set that as my new horizontal angle and I'll say yes. And now you can see here that is now my new HA at zero. Vertical angle didn't change, my horizontal distance and my slope distance didn't change either. So now that that's my zero I can come back to here and I can go ahead and turn the tool whatever degrees I want. So let's say I want to keep it simple. These arrows are going to turn it to the left and to the right at 45 degree increments. So I click it once, the tool is automatically going to spin to 45. If I click it twice, it'll add a 90 degree angle to it. So I'll click it twice and it's going to increase to 135 for me because 45 plus 90 is 135. And then I'll go ahead and click it one more time to get myself to a nice 180 from my original location. And I'll click it four times to go back to my zero. One, two, three, four. And that's how easy that is so far. Okay, so if that's enough to get you going, then that's perfect. Um, the other thing is, let's say, the other thing on the screen is, let's say that you turn the tool to another grid line. So let's say I spin the tool. I have it, obviously I'm looking in a different direction now. I just spun the tool a little bit. And let's say that I want to hold H A at zero. Okay, I'm gonna hold H A at zero. I'm gonna spin my tool to where I want my new horizontal angle of zero to be to be pulling my new angles. I'll say check. And now my new H A is gonna be however I am turned. So now I'm turned over there, that's my new zero. And now I can turn from that new location. So again, to start, go ahead and measure at a location you want to start at. Go ahead and go down here to set your HA to be zero, to turn it if you need to, or to hold your zero and move your tool to a new location. And lastly, let's go over this, what I call the live angle reading. And this is very easy to do. All this is is that after you've set your HA and you've measured, as you spin the tool, it'll give you a live read of how you're moving it. So I just moved it a little bit and it automatically adjusts to exactly how far I moved it on the horizontal angle and on the vertical. So I'll go ahead and move it up. Okay, so I'm just moving it around the room I'm in and it's automatically adjusting all these angles, including the horizontal distance that my, my laser's away from the head unit, as well as the slopes distance from that horizontal angle of the head unit as well. So those are the three basic functions that are associated with Theatolite. Use it however you like. Um, I could see this really being helpful, especially to pivot it on a grid and laying out grid or whatever you're doing from that angle. So feel free to ask questions in the comments um, if you have any extra questions, but um, I'll also try to find uh, maybe a couple YouTube videos and link them in the description of people using general theatolites, the, where you just have people using theatolites and what they use them for. That might help you out to understand how you could use this function better.